All right, guys. Welcome and welcome on to episode eight. I think it is already of the solo self on beginner witchblade, and it's probably gonna be my last episode for quite a while. Maybe I'll do like a proper min max late game um, version of a build like this later at some point. But uh, for now, I expect to either kill Lokar today or to die to Lokar today. So that will be the end <clears throat> of the sp playthrough, basically. And before we do that, though, I think I might want to check what kind of relics I have, first of all, right? Like, if we could craft maybe a relic, but I don't know, man. I mean, the one that you want, right, ideally is Eldritch Pact. I don't have that one, though. Wait, did I get Meditation? And I have Serenity, right? I could just actually craft a Serenity. That's kind of stupid, actually. Yo, Henry, welcome on. Morning from Toronto. Morning to Toronto. Um, wait, I don't have um. Double M. Yep, horse. <laughs> can't clear his R60 scuffed build. Can't even get his R set SMH. I mean, if you don't need his R set to kill Lokar, then what's the point? Right. Do I have all the required items for meditation? I mean, I'm pretty sure this build could do SR60, right? If you. Yeah, we could actually craft it. You could, like, legit craft a serenity here. Uh, I'm kind of too lazy, though, to be honest. <clears throat> Can't even kill crate without pots scuffed. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can't even kill shaper blind. What the fuck? Trash build. I was thinking, I think, about putting more pawns into. I have enough DA, right? I don't need. Uh, if you have, if you're struggling with DA, right? If you don't have like 3k DA, or like not even 2.9k, you can always put more pawns to wasting, right? To like get more OA shred, and thus, um, well, have more effective DA. I mean OA, right? Okay, so what do I do? What about pots? What kind of pots do I even have right now? And obviously to like, you know, properly and max the character, you wanna like farm blooms and then do stuff like that. I mean, uh, get like all the good endgame components, right? Like living armor, etc, etc. I should make at least one though, like make one for the shoulders, right? I think. Because I don't need this much armor absorbed. It's like too much, actually. You got three belts, three maggot belts. Forty, forty-four, and forty-four conversion and rolls forty to sixty. Yeah. What am I weapons should I farm for on a spellbreaker build? You can do um the ones that I was talking about in the video, right? You can do Locksmere, Makadar, you can do the ghosts for spectral swords, right? And also you can do Lauria. And the Genaxia for the Chistress. 
Just rest are gutted. Are they like actually trash now even? I think. I, I actually like Chest Rust being like the best in slot monster frequent. Because they were like so hard to farm anyway, right? Are they like actually trash now? Like why nerf them? Like they were like the hardest to get out of all the four that we just mentioned, right? Um so that's kinda weird, dude. That's like really weird, I don't know. Like why no nerf those, dude? I don't get it. Um Okay, what other kind of pots do we have here? We got this poison pot. So what are those? Chaos, Vet, Poison, Aether, Fire, Cold, Lightning, yada yada yada. <clears throat> okay. Seems good. And um, so yeah, I just said we should craft a living armor, so let's do that. Alright, let's uh Let's get some blooms. Let's do like a quick bloom farming here. And then we go for Yeah, if Chief Thrust have worse than Rakodar, it's not fine. It's a TSS item now. Oh, they made it like into a caster dagger. But does... Trozen doesn't need any more items. Why, why, why Trozen, right? I don't know. It's so weird, dude. Like, are you gonna play it over a bludgeon on Trozen? Of course you're not gonna do that, right? Malkadar and... Dude, Malkadar is way quicker to farm than just run. Like, the run is a little bit longer, right? But the drop rate is way better. Chistra's drop rate is abysmal. Removed cold damage modifier from Radar Shadow. Wait, that's not. I mean, then it's not okay though, right? It's just the cold damage on Radar Shadow. It's not the RR. It shouldn't it still be fine. I think it's still fine. Like, the damage on Radar Shadow honestly only matters in Crucible anyway, right? It doesn't matter anywhere but Crucible. So it should be fine, man. Oh, there's also Crescent Moon. Yes. But if you get a, get a double cold damage apex, um, Chill Strife, you have so much damage on a Chill Strife, right? So. I mean, depending on the affixes, I would say Chill Strife is still better. I mean, I, I was using one Crushing Moon on my breaker because I did not have a perfect Chill Strife. But if I had a perfect Chill Strife, I guess that's probably better than Crushing Moon. Also, Crushing Moon is an axe, right? It's not flat cold by default. Like, the base damage of the axe is not flat cold by default, right? Chill Strive is like pure cold, pure cold dagger. That doesn't always matter, but sometimes it does. Yeah, I was I was using uh, Crush the Moon and the Oxygen Dagger, I think, on Shell Strength. Spellbreaker. But yeah, if you're playing like a standard overall spell record, you can do like one Christian and one just drop as well, that's true. What am I farming? Just blooms. 
just some blooms. I got 16 right now. I need 16. I mean, I have 18 right now. I need 16 for living armor. And then I need like a couple for the pots. Just a couple. So I'm gonna do like one run, right? One bloom farming rod run. And that's it. Like, I, I could farm even more, right, for even more, you know, items, I mean, components rather, but I think I'll stop after one. YouTube will understand how to do this done, right? YouTube will understand the true endgame of Grim Dawn. Yeah, there is. Uh, there are more blooms dropping on this current patch that I'm playing. It's uh, roughly 10% more blooms. Like if you do an average round, you get like 10% more blooms. Kind of 10 to 20% something like that. Or like 10 to 20%. I don't quite know how many exactly you get more, but from what I've tested and felt so far, it seems like 10 to 20% more. Let's uh, craft some stuff here. Nobody GD stashes blooms. Yeah, that's true. The people just GD stash the component <laughs> that they need. Imagine GD stashing the bloom, right? Like what? One, two, three, four. And then let's get the living armor. And then what? What happens if we take away this one? 93%, okay. So we gotta put one in the pants as well, right? Scaled hide and pants. It must feel weird to have a scaled hide in your pants, right? Actually, I'm retarded. I'm fucking retarded. <laughs> this item, I mean, this component adds absorption as well, right? Like, what am I doing? Hello? Mr. Streamer? The Pega? Um, I do want to keep this at 8 points, though, because of the stun resistance that it gives me. Because against low correlator, I don't want um, to go bes like below 80% stun rest actually. Against low car, you do want good stun rest. That is pretty important against them. We got a stone faced of decay. Holy. It's less DA, but it's 18% armor. Are you kidding me? And it's also stun rest. It's no bleed rest then. I lose Elemental and I gain more Petrify and Pierce. I mean... I mean... That's pretty good, right? Yeah, the suffix is garbage. Like, off DK is obviously absolute trash. Uh, the a OA and the A though. Like the suffix is just vitality down, so it literally doesn't exist. Just craft a different suffix. Yeah, just have like 
Yeah, that's the one thing that Grundon misses in it, unfortunately. That's like actually the one big thing that this game misses. Or like is missing still. Okay, how much armor is this? 100. That doesn't even sound that amazing. Feels fucking bad, man. Like, imagine if this was like of readiness or of chaos damage with whatever that is. Like, of. of uh, I don't even know what it is actually. <laughs> of something, something, right? Wrecked by. I all know all the affixes, Protoss, right? Uh, maybe not. <clears throat> Okay, there's one of these here, and then we need a fire pierce, right, that's what I was using. Stone-faced girdle of genie stashing. Yeah man, like, if, if the game had, like, a vendor where you can, like, re-roll one affix while keeping the other, for, like, obviously a pretty expensive price, that would be so freaking awesome. I've said this, I think, like already three years ago. If the game had that, it would be so nice. Oh, that's the wrong one, whoops. But it still doesn't, and it probably never will have that, so. Feels bad, man. Okay, anyway. Um, we're gonna start working on those super bosses. At least, like, the easy Celestial bosses. Um, Lokar and. Before we do Lokar though, we do Bourbon Clones. And Bourbon Clones is the, well, vanilla base game, hidden Celestia boss kind of. So let's uh, kill him, right? So for, to kill him, right, you need to have the Stormheart. And with that Stormheart, which you got, well, you only get the non mythic Stormheart in the Tomb of Korvark in the Astikarn Valley if you have done the quest with the Diary to Dila. Yeah, so like you do the Dila's Diary quest, right, then you get Stormheart in the Tomb of the Korvark, right, in Astikarn Valley. And then you go to the Oak here in the Blood Grove. Who needs Loker if you have Gazer Man? I mean, technically you do get a leveling item as well from the Bourbon Clones, it's true. And then you will have this, right? You're feeding Chilling Breeze, but there is no wind, and this will give you a quest item into your inventory, which also basically tells you where to look for the next quest item. So, I mean, if you read, right, you can also, like, find out all of this yourself if you want to. Imagine reading, though, right? So let's um, actually craft a skeleton key, and we're gonna go into Steps of Torment. You could do that easily. Ground down system, you just make a new blueprint for a certain item which requires the item you're, you're crafting and it rerolls both affixes. Yeah, but that's not the point, right? You don't want it to reroll both affixes, you want it to reroll only one while keeping the other one. Which you could also do. I mean, I guess that's true. Like, if you have like a like a like different crafting recipes for every single affix in the game, then yeah, that could work, right? That is not not wrong. However, I mean, it's, it would it would like reroll the the value of the mod as well, though, right? But yeah, overall, like it's it's fucking um, basically impossible to do, like to implement that in a reasonable way, right? Are clones easier than Lokar? Depends. I would say they're about the same, but they're more consistent. I would say Lokar with a hammer is harder than clones. Lokar with a weak weapon is easier than clones. Yo, Grigor, how you man? Get your first vaccine shot today, nice. 
Grats, grats. Still drawing breath. <laughs> How's that uh, 5G connectivity? Or did you have to like, do you still have to like set it up properly? Did you already try to, to call Bill Gates? Two point five G. In Germany, you have to have three G, right, to be able to go anywhere nowadays. I mean, not anywhere, but like to some places. Like if you want to go to the cinema, for example, you have to have three G. It's kind of funny that they called it like three G after like all the five G memes. But yeah, it stands for what uh, geimpft, genesen, or getested, which is like vaccinated, tested, or um, cured. I mean, not cured, but like basically if you had it already and then you have like proof that you already had it and your body has already like antibodies, right? It's like the 3G. Recovered? Yeah, recovered. Thank you, Empyrean. Depends if the Steldo has physical damage, what? Yeah, it depends if Lokar has physical damage on the Apexels of whatever weapon he has. 5G is not stackable yet, need to get a second shot. Uh, not stable yet, not stackable, what am I saying? Uh, but already I can see pictures from Cosmos and hear faint whispers in my ears provoking me to buy iPhones and Windows 11. <laughs> oh no. We lost one, guys. We lost one. Got the Koof. What is the fuck's the Koof? Ah, uh, it's COVID. Just COVID. Come independent from taxing. C-I-F-T. That's not what it means. What are you talking about? Yo, amazing Loki. Welcome on. Doing taxes while listening to me. I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> wow. Wow, dude. Wow. Wow, Doc Leaf. Imagine being a blood streamer like me and not having all those cool emotes available, uh, enabled. Right? I can only have fucking 25 emotes, like what is this shit? I should get like premium or whatever it is, right? Premium uh, Franker Z face. Or better TTV, better TTV rather, right? Better TTV is better anyway, right? It's literally better. With 7 TV? Oh, is that actually good now? Hmm, okay. I can test it, I guess. I mean, the thing is also, I have 25 at Better TTV and I have 25 at Franker Z Phase. So if I, I can even get like just another 25 from 7 TB, right? It would be like another plus 25 after all, right? But Franker Z Phase is kind of trash, right? They don't even have GIFs, right? They only have. Like, they don't have animated stuff. It's, it's so weird, dude. Plus 25, Kek W. Being 18. Oh, what did I even say that in that one? That was so stupid. But like, not using components at level 93 is like... I don't know, what, what can you compare that to? <laughs> uh, it was so stupid. Comparison of the week, right? But like, not using components at level 93 is like... I don't know, what, what can you compare that to? I don't want to like trash talk anybody here. Like, I'm, I'm gonna stop. But it's like being 18 and like still shitting in your pants. I can realize. Oh yeah. 
I mean, I guess that's... <laughs> I don't want to trash anybody on it, but... It's exactly the same, right? It's literally the same, dude. Literally the same. Gonna play the second one though, you can watch it at your own risk. The fuck did you say, fella? Oh, Pyrans, Visage. Hey, we're up to at least three endgame sets, right? Nice. At least it's a solid trousers joke? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You live in North Carolina, redneck century here. Wait, so you're not from the south of the road, right? Because you're from North Carolina? Ha <laughs> ha! Alright, uh, here's place number two. <laughs> where you have to go, right? When um, you wanna do this quest. Here's where you get the second lore quest note, right? You thought Mike was bad? Uh, I mean... He can't, he couldn't stream this weekend, right? So I had to, you know, adjust a bit. Alright, let's kill Akmos again. It's already feeling a bit better than last time. Right? Last time this was a little bit more monkas. Now it seems easier. Yeah, definitely seems easier. I'm not saying it's super easy, but it's easier, right? Damage could still be better. That's the reason I'm not doing Dokar now. Because I want to do Bourbon clones before Dokar. So when am I gonna flex? Yeah, I didn't want to like incorporate everything that Mike does, right? Uh, you live in Georgia, same. In North Georgia. Nice. Okay, what do we do? Um, we gotta go to the thing next to Locksmith, right? Waiting for the Death Slapper. <laughs> uh, if I slap my desk, I don't even know what's gonna happen. And the Omega scuffed. Um, but I mean, to spice it up, we could search for Lokar, I mean Lokar, uh, Lux Mirrored. Lux Mirror? Oh, he's here, okay. Lux Mirror is here. So Lux Mirror is a pretty ripping boss as well, right? I mean, that's not a boss, it's a freaking elite only, right? So before, before we pull in, right, we wanna, well, make sure to have Blood of Dreig pressable. Okay, and like pull him over here, maybe. Right. Or, you know, just be a 5 hat and use Warcry so that it interrupts him casting and that he can't even cast his Nullify. Because you're a fucking soldier and soldier is broken.
Wrecked by wrecked. <laughs> Alright, uh, we should also kill all these obsidian guys though. Like if I if they drop on a uh, like a durable prefix shield, that would be pretty nice, right? Get an unbreakable, but it's the fire one again, right? And they stanching of arcane barriers, which is like bleed rust, right? And it's fucking garbage. Okay, over here is a, a third spot where you have to go, right? This house, this blue fire um, thing, right? And here you're gonna get lore note number three, like quest lore note number three. And this is uh, all you need, right? You need these three and a sword. And then there's one more thing that you do need. And this is where the salt bag comes into play, right? If you don't have the salt bag, then you can't access the bourbon clones. Which is why you, well, should never throw away the, uh, the salt bag, right? I mean, if you have thrown it away, you can just, like, recreate the character. And, uh... Yeah, just put your salt bag into your chariot stash. That also works, actually. A soldier was a PvE ascendancy, it would be nerfed 50 times by now. The funny thing is, like, soldier, there was a time when soldier wasn't quite as OP, but then they just, like, decided... I felt like it was fine, but then they decided to, like, just buff the fuck out of soldier for, like, no reason whatsoever, and I was like, what the fuck? I mean, I guess the reason was because soldier builds weren't that quick in the Crucible. Anyway, you go to the Necropolis with the salt bag and these things here as well, right? I mean, at the end of the day, right, a soldier is still a melee character and casters in Grom Dawn are probably overall still a little bit stronger than melee, right, so. Anyway, over here, right, over here in the Necropolis, you have this ghost and this ghost, well, basically requires you to give him the lore note quest thingies and your salt bag. You can keep the sword, like he allows you to keep the sword, but you still have to have it in your inventory, I think, to go here. Oh yeah, and then you meet a shrine which needs a skeleton key. I mean, you don't have to take this one, but it's it's fine. Melian Grimdon is actually good though, so Pog, yeah. Oops. Ah, that's a pretty good shrine still, right? A legendary and two blueprints. Seems worth it. Yeah, I mean, I guess the hardest boss in the game is... I don't know what Monk has to play melee. Uh, borderline impossible, rather. more. Okay, so there's um, well some some real life lore connected to this entire area here, kind of. Um, but I'm not gonna talk about it. So. I mean, there's actually like some real life lore also connected to many. Um, graves 
right? Like tombstones that you see across crates, I mean across cairn. Like the one um, next to the shrine in Tyrant Sword, for example. And yo, Air Fox, <laughs> lower blue balls, very dominant move. <laughs> Uh, maybe people are gonna read the lore now. Maybe not, right? That's uh, actually also listen to in-game music here in the spot because it's kind of cool. I know I'm not talking about the Devil's Crossing music. Are there greys in this game? Yeah, there are. So I did forget to actually craft pots, but let's just use the pots that I have. Those should be, I guess, enough anyway. Hopefully. We'll see, we'll see, right? Catch them out. What? What the fuck? Where's the music? Uh, I'm gonna read what you guys are saying later after the fight. Let's just kill these guys first, right? So, um, what you need to know about the fight is that at basically 10% or 20% or whatever this is, HP, they will start to get like a bubble that lasts for something like 8 seconds which basically makes them take almost no damage and that will cuck your last seed, right? If you're like a last seed dependent character um, that feels bad to hit an enemy that has 90% absorption, right? Or 95% absorption, something like that. So try to always make sure that you have one of these clones um, still up Without the bubble, right? that's like, of which you can last it off if you need to. Or if there's none available, just like run around a bit until like their bubbles fade, right? Also, generally, I would say this fight is a lot easier for also casters than melee, to be honest. Because you just kind of like, I don't know, throw a cocktail or like. Shoot at them with your laser, right? Um, so this might be... I will say. It seems fun so far. The bell is tank enough, right? And we're healing enough as well, so so far. Well, yeah, we're starting to meet some... A little scarier clones here. No... No, fi no final form clone though yet, right? Uh, it's another crooked one. Deathly clone. Okay. Also, some of them have resistance reduction, which is why you kind of want to use the resistance spots against these guys. Um, I mean, alternatively, you could also like try to make sure to not stand inside of too many of them all the time, so that like their debuffs don't stack. Because debuffs from like different clones, as far as I know, they're like, I mean, sometimes you have like the same clones actually in here, but if they're like different clones with different names, then I believe their debuffs can stack. Oh, there's actually a final form in here all, all the time already. Uh, okay, I didn't even notice him. Oh, yeah, I guess it's... This spell is tank enough now. <laughs> Seems fine. Let's attack the ones that have more last though, right? Like this one. Let's go over to this one. Let's publish the been fading banner. Let's kill the final form to spawn the actual final form. Let's kill the other side clones here. I mean, there's seven bubbles on there. 
The final form and the actual final form have blade barriers as well, which they use every now and then, so... You don't wanna attack into the blade barrier, right? You don't wanna kill yourself with retaliation or like, die to retaliation, um, like, reflect, right? I mean, yeah, but other than that... The fight is not that hard, right? Compared to other super bosses at least, so yeah. We did well here, I would say. Seemed fine. Certainly not the fastest kill, like this was rather slow, but it was fine. Alright, let me catch up here. So I'm a masochist and want to live as a retaliation warlord. I can't help you don't. <laughs> uh, any recommendations for items and such? Um yeah, I don't know that many retaliation MIs that you can use while leveling either. I mean, the best thing that you can do probably is, I don't know, do like, hope that you drop blue perdition set to like add retaliation and get the most infrequent one, the 1B, right? From the 1B that adds retaliation damage to Ages of Men here as well. And other than that, I think maybe some faction items actually also have a retaliation stuff, right? Um, are the clones bubbles removed by notification? They are not, as far as I know. Mm, but yeah, honestly, like the only thing that I know about retaliation generally is that you shouldn't double with it. And I, because of that, I haven't really like bothered looking that much into like retaliation doubling gear. I mean I, I know some monster and frequents, but most of them are just I don't know. Probably random drops or something. But there there might be as I said like um, faction items that are good for retaliation doubling. Also, after you kill the Burma clones, right, you get this Gazer Man chest, which is a pretty awesome looking item, right? <laughs> Best transmog in the game, basically. So, uh, yeah. Technically, this is also usable for leveling, but compared to Locust, that it's kind of bad. Which is why we're gonna work on opening that Locust boss line Uh, where do we go for that? Let's go to Gloom Ward, right? Yep. We're getting run over by low cars today. I mean, hopefully not. So, self on retaliation playthrough one. I mean, if I if you, if you want me to cure your insomnia, then we can do that. Yeah. Nani Stash is the first thing that you like where you should go for, right? Um, imagine not having done this part already. You mean like Nani Stash part? Mm, yeah, I kind of wanted to just like have all the quests that you need to do for Lokar to open up the way for Lokar, um, like in one episode, like when I actually kill Lokar, that's why I skipped them for now. But yeah, you can definitely like do some of these parts earlier, right? Okay, I mean that's the same quest as like a normal and elite. However, on ultimate you can also go through the vines here, and you will find Arcturus, and here you can craft the Heart of Darkness, and you need this Heart of Darkness, so we gotta craft a Black Tello, and for some reason he himself can't. Craft the black tattle, so you have to like go back, find another smith, and then like craft black tattle there, and then take that black tattle to him, which is, I don't know, it's unnecessarily annoying, but that's just ah, how it is. We speak at last. And I can't even craft it because it's some freaking what is it? Devil's Crossing? No. Comments chosen, okay. Uh, 
Also doogie buckets, thanks for the photo book, man. What's that? Grasping vines? Yeah. Let's grasp a wine together, right? Haha. -ha. Okay, let's get the black towel here, right? Let's get all of these, why not, right? Should have done that like years ago. Actually, this ring is really good. Black Tello. There we go. Now, once you have the Black Tello, right? You want to go to the Chaos Rift between Ugdenborg and the uh, Lone Watch. Am I getting bullied by Chat again? He is bad, man. Watch the two. Independent from the taxing, come independent from the why am I even watching it, man? <laughs> this is soldier Ocritus, right? That is correct, yes. Didn't watch the other one, wow. Yeah, right. Blue balling chat. Basically, again. Have any advice for a soldier necro? Um, if you don't have any gear and you are like starting out. I think personally the best way to I mean, I have an end game cadence death knight that you can play with the Leviathan weapon, but like unless unless you actually have the Leviathan weapon and the Warborn set, it's kind of not that good. I mean you can use SR set instead of Warborn set. And I'll just quickly talk about Stormheart, right? This is where you get it. Holy shit, don't die there. Uh hello? What is this dude? Freaking super man. Almost backstabbed me. Um yeah, yeah, like over here right in the desolate wastes, once you have the black heart in your inventory, Heart of Darkness, the mythical storm heart urn spawns, otherwise it doesn't spawn, right, if you don't have this in your inventory. And that's how you get it. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, unless you have that Cadence setup, right, I would say Physical Blade Arc is the best way f to play a uh, Death Knight, like, easily, like, without any gear. And the only thing that you need for that is the Celestial Halberd from the guy protecting the Tomb of the Heretic Dungeon. You don't have to actually enter the dungeon, just kill the guy protecting the dungeon, and he will drop the halberd, right? And that halberd is absolutely insane for death knight. Um, you can get it on normal already, right? And once you have it, start playing well physical blade arc on the death knight. It's absolutely insane. Uh, you can fill out the rest, like the remaining pieces later on with, say, I don't know, creek set, which is easy to farm, right? Or shadow ram set, which is like not quite as easy to farm, but still farmable. Or the well. Um, random drop Blood Rager set, for example, right? And those three um, all work very, very nicely, I would say, with the weapon and the blade arc. So, yeah, that would be my advice. 
Ah, it's level 4, 67. Yeah, then you basically have no endgame gear, right? Yeah, none. Okay, the other item that you need for low color, apart from the Stormheart and the Heart of Darkness, is an item that you get over here from this gigantic corpse, Sardina's Memento. I mean, Sardina was the former spirit guide of Devil's Crossing, and basically the lore is that, like, when the Aetherius attacked Devil's Crossing in the cutscene between, like, after killing Logarian, right? She died, and, uh, well, yeah, she, she died here, right? So, oh, there she is. And then you, you loot her corpse, like, all the other corpses that you loot in this game, right? Which is kind of weird. And then you get her pendant, and this pendant is what you need to open up the way to Lokar. So if you get it, right, even on accident, don't ever sell it. You need it. Yo, Keita. Welcome on, welcome on. She got skull crushed. What a noob. What? You can literally like, still see her skull, though. I mean, her, her head, right? Hey, Anna Rogue, how are you? Welcome on, welcome on. How's your... Uh, are you playing Warlord or Warder? I forgot. How's your how's your character doing? Did you finally venture into higher difficulties or... Still taking it slow. Okay, the, the, the last thing we have to do to open up the, uh, the way to Lokar is we have to find the Flamond Bleu, right? the blue zombie. And he has three spawn locations in the outskirts. Um, number one is here. Uh, he didn't spawn here. Um, number two and three are somewhere else. But before we even do that, we should probably like clear this area towards the shrine. Right? Because we need to bring the zombie over here next to the shrine. How did the person who did the first playthrough find all these special boss quests? It'll take weeks. I mean, this game has playtesters, you know? Or like, had playtesters. I think actually all secret quests have all been found out by the playtesters. Um, the only thing that like the developers gave a hint towards was the the one, um, well, quest in a way, or like, challenge item that you get from completing the entire game on hardcore without any class, right? I mean, not the entire game, but rather to make it to, like... Uh, you have to, like, make it, basically make it to the Vanguard of the 3 on Ultimate at level 100, right? But all the class on hardcore. And, uh, it's actually something I haven't done myself yet, either. It was like super tedious. Alright, spawn location number two for the blue zombies over here. Um, so what you wanna do, right, if you have these skeletons running around from your um, ah, devotion. I've been expecting you, human. Yo, Havik 4K, thanks for the prime. Welcome, welcome. On. Enjoy Well, some of these emotes and welcome, on, welcome. On. Thank you for all your support. And also thank you for watching the guides. That means a lot as well. When is that video? The video of... Of what? Grunto? So like the knowledge was readily available when it released? Yeah, it basically was. And also they check the files, like the dev, I mean the, the playtesters do sometimes. But if you actually read the lore, you don't need to look it up, right? If you actually read all the lore, you should... I mean, if you read the lore and you're, like, looking around for a bit and you like, you know, these kind of, like, schnitzel hunts, then, uh, yeah, you can... You can find it out. Like, you can find out these... Uh, like, figure out these quests to yourself. For sure. Kill me if you can 69. Welcome, welcome. That's like a 
Thank you, emoji or what? <laughs> I mean, thank you for watching. You think if a, if a bigger... Oh shit, I can't talk. You think if a bigger emphasis was put on multiplayer, the game would have been more popular among people? Probably, yeah. Like, no servers... No server side multiplayer is like probably the main reason why many people don't play it as much or maybe even know about the game. Uh, in the rock set, I'm close to level 82 but need some more reputation maxing before moving over to higher difficulties, I presume. Nice, nice. Warlord. <laughs> War Warlord. What if it blew up people? Paul's Cathedral would die. <laughs> Dude, what is your what is your what is your autocorrect doing to your sentences, man? Wilson did multiplayer, right? Yeah, Wilson blew up, right? Like a freaking bomb. Honestly though, Wilson did do multiplayer the right way, right? Because Wilson properly um, separated multiplayer server gameplay from single player non server side gameplay. So you can actually play Wilson the way you play Grim Dawn right now, or you could play it the way you can play Path of Exile, right? You can have both of best worlds in a game that's unfortunately not the best, but the idea, the concept was actually... I think that's like one of the things that Wilson did right. right? Like, you, you can play Wilson offline, single player, and you can play it online, server side with friends. It's perfect, actually. If Grim Dawn was like that, it would be, in my opinion, also perfect. <laughs> Yo, Nidia, how you, man? Welcome on, welcome on. Alright, let's see if we have the Flamond Bleu here. And also, we don't want any of these uh, skeletons to ever attack it. I mean, they already despawned, but... If you have some skeletons still around, you should use pet attack to like direct them away from the skeleton because you don't want, or like the zombie rider, you don't want them to kill the zombie rider. You want the sky to like come with you. You don't want him to die. I mean, he's gonna die eventually, but you don't want to actually bleed kill him. You want to bring him over here to the circle and bye bye. And over here you have the spirit, right? And this time the spirit will require you to have these three items in stash, right? I mean, your inventory, Mythic Storm Heart, Heart of Darkness, and Sadina's Memento. And um, these two are gonna disappear, you can still keep the Stormheart. And here's another shrine which has a 1% chance to drop a legendary item as well. Now, once you go past this door here, you kind of... Um, Wanna already pop a Hothras ointment because there can be some weird rock tra rocky traps here that like freeze you all the time and, and they're just like super annoying honestly. So just like pop a Hothras ointment to be safe, right? Unless you already have like 80% freeze rest. I actually didn't check. I mean, I guess I was actually pretty close. 55 over cap now. And yeah, here's where you farm also the Dark One set. Uh, I mean, just get it right. There are four, a total of four Arterians here in this um, Edge of Reality. And each one drops one piece of the set. So you have to farm all four of them to get all four pieces right. And generally, um, these aren't that easy to get. Yeah, like you just you don't just go here and get them right. Um, but apparently, this character is a little bit lucky. <laughs> Thank you. 
Here's uh, number three, right? A turn number three. And a turn number four. I mean, let's just go there as well, right? I can just go to them as well. Check them out. He's at the very end here. Yep, there he was. Now, unlike the Bourbon clones, right, where you walk over the bridge and like enter Devil's Crossing, and you can also do that here, right? You can like take a look at the Devil's Crossing here, see how. What Devil's Crossing would look like if the Ethereals basically um, have like won the war, I guess, or something like that, right? And I mean, there was like another guy here actually that you could talk to, but um, there is no fight here. There is no actual fight here. They're piss easy to get. <laughs> I mean, to compare to some other things, they are, yeah, for sure. Stonefist Rebuke will drop from the fourth one. Dude, Stonefist Rebuke will like drop from a rock. Like, Stonefist Rebuke drops anywhere, all the time. Like candy, dude. Um, the actual way that we have to take here is this one, right? Through the bloody driver here. I still didn't craft the other pots, right? Oh well. I mean, let's actually craft the pots though, like, I did, I did, like, you know, farm the blooms to craft the pots as well, let's just do it, right? So to go back here again, you can put a portal here, you can't put a portal inside. Um, let's go to the slip real quick. Yo, Azimov, workman, workman. Xantar's root. Xantar's root. <laughs> wow. wow, toxic. And let's check out what we have here. We can craft like an Ugnan Sal, right? I actually didn't get the other Ugnan one, what the hell? We also didn't get the Elixir of the Drangul anyway. Okay, never mind. Uh, we have this. We have. No, we don't have this one. And we have these, right? Okay, oh well. I guess we only crafted two, two things then. I mean, it's kind of ironic, right, that the root of all evil leads to the Crucible, right? The Crucible is the root of all evil. Okay, so let's pot up here, because if you move, he's already gonna spawn, basically. So let's, um, we need Fire Us. Um, you can also pop Lightning if you want to. He does deal some Lightning, but it's really not that big of a deal, usually. Everything else you don't need. He doesn't, I mean, other than that, he mostly deals um, physical damage. Right? It's physical and fire and then a little bit of lightning on his uh, like lightning ball ability. And he does shotgun with like the projectiles that he spawns whenever he like smashes the, the, the ground, right? And they like move outward and then inwards again. And at least try to dodge the ones moving in again, right? And don't get hit twice by all the projectiles. That's at least what you should try. So like move around him a bit. Or what you can also do is you can like stay elevated compared to him. Also, if you have to run from him. Don't wait with that until you're like actually low HP. Run away before like half HP because he's like gonna doom bolt you, right? Like fire bolt you um, when you run. Oh, 
also spawns clones, which... Well, don't really do anything, to be honest. I mean, they can debuff you, though. And they summon them. There he is. Loker down! And yeah, he has a chance to... Like, he has a 100% chance to always drop one out of the four pieces of the Loker set. Um, which means you need at least four runs and up to... I don't know, depending on like, how lucky you are, right? You would have to like kill this guy more than once, obviously. More than four times, probably, as well. And, well, if you get all four pieces, then you have the best leveling set in the game, right? Also, he can... A little bit scarier than this, depending on what kind of weapon he wields. Apparently had no weapon this time? What the fuck? Did it, did it just like despawn? What is happening here? Um, the hell? Like sometimes he can spawn with a weapon that has like physical damage affixes. And if he rolls those on a hammer, it can get like actually scary, like an actually scary fight. But yeah, there it is, right? The character can kill Lokar, so he's... Basically, a viable beginner build, right? Because you can play this build all the way from level 1 to 100 without any gear, without any blueprints. And yeah, you can also kill Lokar and then farm Lokar, get the Lokar set, and use that to level up your other characters. That and the XP pots, and then like the merit, which you can buy. Let me also show you, right? The merit that you can use to skip difficulties. Or also, you can also just use it to, well, unlock all the portals and, like, jump around on normal and elite difficulty. Um, you buy that one, I mean, there's a quest here for that, actually, right? You can buy it from Azgra, the Savior's Merit, right? You can, like, buy three every time you are here, right? You can get some XP for buying one. Congratulations, you have, well, almost acquired all the leveling gear that you need, right? You have the Levinus' Ring, the Merit. The local set, experience potions. Yeah. Other than that, the build can obviously also well clear all the main campaign content, clear all the totems, all the dungeons. We have actually not killed Mad Queen though, right? Let's kill Mad Queen. You once had a double rare axe Loker, you did Loker like 40 times, and at one time he almost raped you. Rip incoming to Mad Queen now. Imagine. Imagine, right? Imagine. So, I mean, with the Mad Queen, there is one thing. She has a red aura that she activates when she screams. I mean, she doesn't always activate it but when she screams, but whenever she's gonna activate it, she's gonna scream, right? So, basically, whenever she screams, look out for her activating an aura. It's very hard to see, though, but it is there. Um, and if she does that, basically stop attacking her, because... Like, just run away to be safe, right? I don't think melee attacks... Yeah, it's only um, non-melee attacks that trigger it, right? Trigger her retaliation spikes, but... Um, I mean, if you just play it safe, right? Like, just move away when she has her aura up.
There it is, right? This is the aura. And she's gonna scream again and then deactivate it right now. So let's scream again, right? Activate it again. Scream again, deactivate. And yeah, that's basically how you kill Mad Queen while being safe all the time. And she also has a like a unique weapon, right? Which you can farm, which is pretty nice for say like a witch hunter. Okay, I think we're done now. Herp Derp Queen screen. Yeah, yeah, it's like I mean, she's She's probably mad that like the other queen is like the actual queen now and she got put into this weird Rock in jail. Um, we got a mythical chaos gaze. This is really good, actually, not gonna lie. This is, I mean, if you want more damage, right, you pick this over Avenger of Karen. Avenger of Karen is basically the defensive version. This is the offensive version here, right? I mean, both get beaten by Razin Amulet, I would say. But that one is rather rare, so. I mean, this one is actually pretty fucking rare as well. I don't know why I got one. Uh, you can also get a blueprint to craft those, actually, I think. This one should be more common. I don't know why I got this, like, after Avenger of Karen even. But yeah, can also use this one, for sure. Anyway, thank you so much everybody for watching on YouTube as well. I'll hopefully see you around on either some endgame video or some other playthrough or whatever you want to watch, right? Check out my other guards as well, don't forget that, and I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Alright chat, you are released. Show templates. Oh. Sure. Uh, 27 hours, 40 minutes. I think I hit level 20 after, I mean level 100 after like 21 hours or something like that.